Today we're going to talk about all the different options for dosing your tank. Hey guys, it's Devin with Reef Dudes. Now, a week or two ago, I put out a video about how to know when to start dosing your reef tank. Now, from there, I've had a lot of questions about people wanting to know how should they dose, right? What's the difference between two-part, or if you want to use Kelkwasser or Calcium Reactor, what are the differences? Can you explain it all? The other question I'm getting asked constantly is what parameters do I keep my tank at? Um, so just to start, I keep my alkalinity, or KH, which stands for, at 8.5. I keep my calcium around 420 to 450, somewhere in that range, and I try and keep my magnesium around 1350. Now with KH, I, anywhere from about 7 to 10 is generally kind of a nice acceptable range. I've seen people go higher, I've seen people go lower, but I stick right in the middle and 8.5 has kind of been the magic number for my tank. Now with calcium, same thing, anywhere from that 400 to 450 is generally, for the most part, acceptable. I keep kind of 420, 450 has been a good range. Uh, magnesium, I'd say 1250 to 1400, you're fine, but again, 1350 is kind of in the middle and that's where I aim for. Now, if you're just starting to dose your tank for the first time, the probably the easiest thing to use is Kelkwasser. Now, that's also something that you can pick up called pickling lime, something you can buy from a grocery store, or your calcium hydroxide is kind of like the more chemical name. Now, the main difference if you buy it from a saltwater or a reefing store like, you know, Amazon or Reef Supplies or BRS, one of these places, is that it's going to be more pure than you get in a pickling line of grocery store. So there's less potential contaminants in your tank. Now, the whole reason just to start out for dosing. Uh, when you start dosing your tank, your main goal is to keep your water parameters stable. If your water parameters are all over the place, they're going up and down and spiking and dropping lower, your inhabitants aren't going to be as happy. I mean, your fish, some of your inverts and stuff, they won't be as happy. Your corals aren't going to be as happy. Now, the whole secret to a thriving reef tank is stable parameters. Like a lot of people say, I've heard this before, you're not keeping coral, you're not keeping a reef tank, you're keeping water. And if you're keeping water, everything in there has those stable parameters and it's going to thrive. So the easiest way to start out for a lot of people is Kelkwasser or calcium hydroxide. Now, there's a couple ways you can dose this to your tank. Now, one of the main benefits is it's literally one thing you add. You don't have to worry about multiple chemicals. You add one thing and you're done. Now, you can either, a couple methods, the probably the easiest one, simplest one to set up initially would be to drip it into your tank. So you mix, you know, a scoop or two into a bucket of water. Um, so the ratios are, a lot of people ask how much do you actually use? So you can do anywhere from, I'd say a very low demanding tank would be about half a tablespoon per gallon of water. Uh, a medium tank would be about a tablespoon per gallon and a higher demand tank would be about two tablespoons per gallon. Now two tablespoons per gallon is the maximum that will dissolve into water. So that's kind of your high end. Now when doing this, okay, so you can mix into a container and put like a little airline valve on it and let it drip into your tank throughout the day. Now you don't want to add too much calcoaster too fast or it's going to cause a big pH spike. So increasing pH is one of the benefits of using calcoaster. So, okay, so we know anywhere from half a tablespoon to two tablespoons per gallon is how much we can physically dose to our tank or how much will dissolve into the water. Now, how much you actually dose to your tank, ideally you would try and match it up with how much your auto top off. So if you evaporate one gallon per day, maybe you mix up a gallon of calcoaster solution and you let that drip into your tank through the day. If you have a sump, you can hide it below. If you have an all-in-one, it wouldn't look as pretty to have that sit above it. Um, so that's probably the cheapest way to do it. The next level up, what I would say is putting it in your auto top off. So if you have the main benefit to doing it this way is you don't have to necessarily make that new batch of calcoaster drip in your tank every day. So if your tank evaporates five gallons in a week, you know, you can have your five gallon bucket hiding in your stand with your top of pump and you only have to mix it once a week. And a lot of people like to be lazy. No one wants to be on this every single day. So that's probably the second easiest way to do it. So if so you got your five gallon bucket, you know, you put in your five to 10 tablespoons, whatever it is, mix it all up and it will dose in your tank as your auto top off pump kicks on. Now, the one slight negative to this is different times of the year your auto top off may kick on more in the summer and less in the winter, for instance, like when it's hot out, you're going to evaporate more. Now on that note, okay. So in this, now it's also a bit harder on your return pump. So you will want to clean your return pump more, more often and more frequently if you're doing it this method. Now, the other thing to note is it, 
since it is harder on your pump, it will not 100% always dissolve. There can be a bit of a sledge on the bottom of your top off container. So whenever you refill it, you want to wash it out and make sure your pump is suspended. Like put it in a little cup or set it on something. But you just want to make sure it's sucking up the water and not the sludge that may be at the bottom of your top off container. So the third way of doing it would be through a Kelkwasser reactor. So there are certain ones you can get that will spin and they'll mix the Kelkwasser. And there's other ones that will kind of inject water through the bottom using either a pump and it will mix it with it and put it into your tank. Now the advantage of doing it this way is you can put in much more than that two teaspoons per gallon. You can have a large quantity in there and either there's a pump or a stirrer or something that's gonna spray in there and mix it up for you and then it can be dosed to your tank. So it's not as hard on your pump. So you could be using a doser, for instance, to push water into this container and then that water will kind of overflow your saturated solution into your tank. So you could do it through, um, like Two Little Fishies has one where you can do it using your top off or you can be using a doser to force water through. Now it's gonna be easier on your pump because you're only putting reverse RODI water through it. So that's kind of one big benefit doing that way. And you can dose a more saturated solution to the tank. It's always hundred percent saturated and you don't have to fill it up on a weekly basis. You can get away a little longer with it. Now, when you're dosing Kelkwasser to your tank, um, so a few benefits, one, it increases your pH, which most people have issues with low pH. So that's a big benefit. Um, it can precipitate out heavy metals in your water, which is also another really good benefit. Now, the only one kind of negative potentially is you can't, if you, your tank needs more alkalinity than it does calcium, for instance, it's you have to adjust that manually. So if you're doing Kelkwasser for the first time, you're gonna wanna dose some calcium alkalinity, make sure your levels are where you want it, and then add Kelkwasser. You don't wanna try and use Kelkwasser to make an adjustment, you only want to use it to maintain what your daily levels are. Now, on the level of dosing two parts, so if you want to make an adjustment, you can mix up your calcium or your alkalinity, and dose it directly to the tank for an adjustment, or you can set it up on my preferred method is to set it up on a doser. So this one might cost you a little bit more money. You know, you got to spend a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks, depending on the quality of doser you want. Now people usually call it two part, but it's really three part. Um, one quick note on Kalkwasser is it doesn't dose magnesium. So you still have to dose that separately on the side. Now for dosing your tank, um, so the first one is calcium, which is calcium chloride is the actual chemical you're dosing to your tank. Now you can buy this kind of in a pre-mixed bottle, like on my small tank, I use the Red Sea. And on my large tank, I use a bulk powder that I mix with RODI myself, because it's much more affordable when you're dosing a lot on a large tank. So for alkalinity, you have sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. Now, sometimes it can be confusing with the differences. Okay, so two different scenarios. So sodium bicarbonate is actually basically baking soda. And this is has less an effect on pH, so it's better to do a large adjustment. If you're, alkalinity is 8 and you want it to be 8.5, I would use sodium bicarbonate. Now, if you're dosing daily and you have low pH, you want to use sodium carbonate, also known as soda ash. Now, the benefit of doing this one is it also raises your pH, so it's good as kind of your daily dosing. Now, another tip you can do is I also dose my sodium carbonate or my alkalinity at nighttime, and I do this because that's when your tank's pH is at its lowest, and so dosing it through the night is going to help boost your pH up and keep your pH more stable. So that's kind of a little tip on that one. Now for magnesium, there's two different types of magnesium. There's magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate. Um, in my tank, I mix the two of them together for my magnesium supplement. Now you can put magnesium on a doser, but it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to. Magnesium doesn't get used up necessarily daily. Like it will hold its level for a long time, then it'll finally drop. So I kind of just add some every couple of weeks, once a month. Eventually maybe one day I'll put a small amount on a doser, but for now adding it once a month or so works pretty well. Now for how much to dose, I mean, the only way you're going to know is going to be by testing. And to know when how to dose, I did a video on this two weeks ago, so I'm going to put that at the end and in the description below. But you have to test. Now the best bang for your buck for test kits for starting out is the Red Sea Foundation Test Kit. That's my personal favorite. Um, if you look at the cost of most test kits for the refill price to the test kit, I mean, that's by far it's a very high quality test kit and the refills are probably one of the more affordable ones. So if you're just starting out, I'd 100% recommend the Red Sea Foundation kits. Now for alkalinity testing, the HANA tester is by far my favorite just because it's quick and easy. And alkalinity is the one thing I test most frequently, so I do really like that one. Now the third main way of dosing is using a calcium reactor. And there's a few big benefits to a calcium reactor and a few negatives. So I mean, the first negatives is calcium reactors are not cheap. They're, you know, a couple hundred bucks up to quite a bit. You can buy them for 200, five, six, seven hundred bucks. Now the big difference in them is generally the quality of the parts used. 
Now, the basic concept of Kelsey Reactor, you put some media inside of it, such as like Carib C has a Reborn or Carib C has a R media, and it's essentially coral skeletons. And what you're doing is you inject CO2 or carbon monoxide into a chamber with water cycling through it. And the CO2 is going to make the water more acidic, and it's going to slowly dissolve that coral skeleton. Now, you're going to drip that water back into your tank, and the drip is called the fluent. And the fluent is going to be water that's full of all the minerals from the calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and trace elements back into your tank. So that's essentially how you're maintaining your parameters is by dissolving old coral skeletons. So you're giving the corals exactly what they want, exactly what they're made of. So that's kind of a huge benefit. You're getting your trace elements all in one. Now, the one kind of downside to a calcium reactor is it lowers your pH. The CO2 and the acidic of your water drops your pH lower. So some people can either combat this by adding a second chamber to their calcium reactor, which will help absorb more of that CO2 that's left in the water. Or another thing they'll do, some people will add um, kelp washer to it. You can also add like air stones or pull in outside air and certain things to help kind of counteract it. So some tanks don't issue, some people that's the one kind of downside to it. The other downside, I like I said earlier, is the cost. They're not the cheapest. Now on a small tank, honestly, I don't think I would do it for the cost. It's kind of like, eh, is it worth it? Dosing is probably your cheaper one overall. Now on a large tank, if you're, gonna, I'm gonna say about 150 gallons or larger, um, the cost of two parts might get more expensive, right? If you're dosing 20 mils a day, not a big deal. If you're dosing 80, 90 mils a day, if you have a giant tank, tank pack full of coral, it's gonna get really expensive to buy that two part on a regular basis. Now you can buy bulk powders like I do, and it definitely does make it cheaper, but that's kind of the point where you might wanna start considering calcium reactor. You have your larger upfront cost, once you have that, it's pretty darn cheap. Now, when you set up a calcium reactor for the first time, there's some cool stuff like a carbon doser, which is a little electronic device that controls uh, your bubble count of your CO2 going into the water. So that can make your life really easier. Or you can use something like a Neptune Apex, and you can use that to monitor the pH inside the reactor and kind of control your solenoid valve to turn it on and off. Now, I used to use one of those as a backup as a safety, but ideally you want to tune your calcium reactor until you get that perfect pH so it doesn't go up and down it swings it's just completely level your solenoid never clicks and it's just consistently dosing your tank now once you get a calcium reactor set up you know it might take you a week or two to get it dialed in at first but once you do that you can literally probably don't have to touch it for months so it's one of the lowest maintenance options out there once it's dialed in now if you add a bunch of corals to your tank or once you're corals start growing a ton you, you know you might have to tweak your calcium reactor but that same goes for everything right if you got more growth in your tank you're probably gonna have to dose a little more calc wasser you're gonna have to up your dosing so the only way you're gonna know that is by testing your tank so regardless when you're setting up a new dosing method it's something you want to test daily and once it's dialed in you know you can be a little more lax and like i test my tank once a week so something you can do you know sometimes a little slacking like i know my tank's pretty stable maybe sometimes i'll skip a week test it every second week but if you're just starting out or you're changing your tank, you're adding new corals, stuff's growing, or even you fragged a bunch of stuff. You frag a bunch of stuff, it's gonna heal and grow. And those are the times that you wanna make sure you test your tank a little more often. So hopefully that kinda of gives you guys a good overview of the difference between Kelkwasser to between two part slash three part or calcium reactors. Can be confusing, can be you know a big decision when to start out. At the end of the day, they all dose your tank. They're all gonna get the job done for the most part. And it really just depends which one you prefer. Each one has different aspects, each one has cost. I've tried them all. I've made my own calcium reactor, you know, I've tried Kelsquaxer, you know, I right now I'm doing two part. Uh, mainly it's because I love the calcium reactor, but I wanted the space in my sump for my frags. So it came out and I just doing two part for now. So I mean, every single method has its own kind of benefits, its own pros and cons. So if you guys have any questions on this, as always, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to dig deeper into any one of these, you know, let me know. And if you guys have your own question, head over to reefdues.com slash ask, fill out the form, and I'll make a video on it and answer it on the air. That was kind of a cool way to get a personal video on something that you're dying to know if you need advice on something. And if you guys enjoyed this, hit this like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button, but you know you liked it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe, hit that bell, because really the bell is the new subscribe button. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys on the next video.